Hey, welcome back to my island of shadow moss. Apparently y'all really liked my first Animal Crossing video, so I'm back again to bring you along as I try to sort out this island. As you can see, we still have plenty of mess on our hands here, but we're gonna work on some of that today. Last time we did this gorgeous botanical garden entrance for the museum. I think it turned out really well for our boys Brewster and Blathers. I'll put a card here in case you want to watch this area come together too. Today we're going to work on getting my home's act together. Currently my house is all the way at the back here. I don't have a super clear plan for what we're going to do with it yet, but we're going to sort that out as we go along. So the sort of blurry picture I have for this build is that I'm wanting to move it all the way up to the front of my island in the area where Coco is right now. Then I want to turn it into a sort of antique thrift store. I love visiting these places in real life and I love clutter as you can see from the disaster that I have at the front over here. I just can't bring myself to throw this stuff away when maybe someone else could use it. So yeah, having a secondhand store where I can embrace my hoarder tendencies and maybe consolidate some of the excess items I have to give away sounds like the perfect use for my home. So let's jump into the speed build and we'll figure out what it's actually going to look like as we go. The first thing to do was to kick Coco out of her spot and move my house down here. She now has a lovely temporary spot up on the hill right next to where I'm storing all my simple panels that you saw earlier. Eventually she'll get a real spot, but I just needed her out of my way for now. Although I'm not entirely sure if I want to keep Coco or replace her with somebody else. I just happened upon her and thought she could be a good fit for my witchy area with Barbara, but I'm also not too attached to her and could see replacing her eventually. I'm thinking maybe Anka or Fuchsia could also be great. I'm partial to Anka, but let me know who you think would be a good replacement. Or if you're a Coco stan, convince me why I should keep her. For the exterior of my house, I wanted it to look like one of those sort of junky antique shops that has all sorts of random crap spilling out all over their front lawn. When you see a shop like that, you know it's going to be a good one with decent prices, at least in my opinion as someone who loves rusty old junk and has a small budget. So I grabbed a bunch of stuff from my storage and just started throwing it around till I liked the way it looked. There was so much back and forth here with me placing things down, moving them around, recoloring pieces, then getting distracted and bouncing around to other things. So I cut out a lot of it because it was too all over the place and hard to watch. Hopefully it's easier to follow now. I moved my house to the front right next to the airport so that if anyone comes to visit, it'd be easy for them to come check out the wares. This little beach I wanted to utilize for sharing the extra items I have to give away. I have tons of things to share, so I definitely wanted to keep as much of this beach clear for them as possible, but I also didn't want it to look out of place or like a complete mess. So I put a few decorations to help tie it into the rest of the exterior and look like an extension of the shop. Then with the rest of it, I made this picnic blanket area to lay out all of my free items on. I put all the custom codes I use in this build in the description in case you like any of them for your own island. I couldn't paint the last bit of blanket tassels in the corner because it was too close to the water, so I just covered it with a wheat field. So yeah, as you probably guessed, I have too many items so they're spilling off the blanket, but whatever. I should just sell some of these because I am so poor in this game now after these two builds, but I'd rather share them with other people. Not that I really know anyone to share with, but it's the thought that counts. Speaking of being poor in Animal Crossing, labels showed up on one of the days I was working on this, and since I love changing my character's look, 
I definitely had to take her up on her request so that I can get those tailor's tickets. I don't have the savings to be spending actual bells on new clothes. She wanted a formal outfit, which I thought I was already wearing, but apparently you can't have her assess your current outfit for some damn reason, so I had to change it. Which isn't a big problem, cause I take any opportunity to change my character's look. If you saw my last video and you see me now, you can tell I don't have one specific look for my character. I know most people make their character look like themselves or keep their look consistent, but that's just so boring to me. This is a video game and if I can completely change my person's look, I'm going to do that every chance I get. I keep my skin tone, eye shape, and eyebrows the same, but everything else gets switched up all the time. Hairstyle and color, eye color, I can't just pick one. I want all the possibilities all the time. This also ties into me not doing one single theme across my island. It's like my version of bi panic, but on my pansexual level, so it can't even stick to one aspect of my life. Behind my house, I did a bit of landscaping to fill out the area more. I originally did a whole thing back here, but it didn't look good so I tore it all up and now we're on to my second attempt. I think this one turned out much better, but I'm still not completely happy with it. I didn't fuss with it too much though, cause depending on what I end up doing with the areas next to it, I may end up changing this a lot again anyway. So behind this area is a little plaza section that leads over to the botanical gardens and museum. There's a milk and cookie stand and a coffee stall over here, which I love, but I haven't finished the rest of that area yet. I want to put in some tables and chairs and fit in a staircase that leads up to the second level, but that's a problem for another day, probably whenever I get to finishing my entrance. To the left of my house on the second level, I want to have an orchard and meadery. I'm planning on having Cherry run the orchard, but I'm not sure who I want to run the meadery yet. I want another bad bitch like Cherry to be her neighbor, so maybe someone like Fuchsia or Renee, the horse one with the piercings, not the rhino. Deidre or Hazel could be cute too, though I do already have Puddles and I love her, so maybe I could just move her there. Clearly I have no fucking idea. Help my indecisive ass choose and leave a comment with your pick, please. Moving inside to the main entrance of the home, I'm turning this into your typical antique store. We've got lots of old furniture and decor items all cluttered together. The main checkout counter is going to be down here too. This is exactly the type of antique store I want to visit in real life. When there's so much clutter you don't know where to look and it's hard to move around all the shit everywhere, that is the best place to find unique treasures for a deal. Walking into a shop where everything is clean and spaced out is an immediate no for me. I'll probably walk around for a minute to be polite cause I feel too awkward to immediately turn around and walk out, but I know there is no way I'm affording anything in that type of store. If there's nothing rusty or dusty in the place, I feel like I can't touch anything and that I should be walking around with my hands on my head like my mom used to make my siblings and me do when we were little and misbehaving in stores. Apparently, this isn't as common of a thing as I thought because when I told my partner this, they had no recollection of doing anything of the sort when they were a kid. Please tell me I'm not alone in this. Your parents made you walk around with your hands on your head or in your pocket at stores with them when you were a kid, right? The room on the right I made into the kitchenware section. I would spend way too much time in this room in real life. I guess I'm revealing all my shopping habits in this build. So yeah, I usually find shopping at most places to be kind of frustrating, except for a few key places. Antique shops, garden stores, 
bookshops, kitchen tours, and dog stores. Probably because these places tend to be less busy, and the fewer other humans I have to interact with, the better in my opinion. Plus, these stores have all the things I love, so they're a win-win. I incorporated each of these in this home, except for the dog and pet store, so I would literally spend like all day in this place. Which is probably good, seeing as it is my home now in Animal Crossing. This next room is the one at the back, which I'm making into a used book section. I cut out quite a bit at the beginnings of this room because I could not for the life of me figure out the wallpaper and flooring combo I wanted and rearrange this room so much. It's such a small room, but I feel like it was one of the hardest for me to put together and it took way longer than it should have. Eventually though, it does start coming together and I really like the final result. Bookstores in general are so cozy and relaxing to me, and this one is no exception. Even if I don't buy anything, I just love walking around a good bookstore. The smell of books, especially mixed with fresh coffee if there's a cafe in the shop, is one of the best scents in the entire world. Shockingly, not everyone loves the smell for some reason. I remember growing up, my sister would complain about the weird smell when we'd go to bookstores. This blew my mind because I'm the exact opposite opinion. I'd happily smell it all day. You agree with me though, she's the weird one, right? This left room on the first floor I made into a clothing thrift store. Most fashion is so unsustainable and gets expensive if you want to buy things that aren't going to fall apart in a year, so I buy most of my clothes secondhand online. This way I can get much nicer items for a price that's nicer on my wallet. Plus I get to try things on in the privacy of my home instead of going through the challenge of clothes shopping in store. I just feel like it's such a hassle to try on things in an actual store. There's usually way too many other people you have to move around and wait on, plus sales associates talk to you. And I just don't want to be acknowledged in any way when I'm in public. Even if they're just trying to help or saying welcome, I don't like it. It makes me feel like someone's watching my every move and that there's pressure on me to buy something. I used to work in retail, so I know usually they couldn't care less, but I still feel that way. So yeah, yay for online thrifting. Though I would go here cause there'd be no other people to bother me, so I could actually shop in peace. This room was looking a bit too put together for me with the mint walls and the matching clothes, so I ended up swapping out the wallpaper and some of the clothes to make it look a bit more mismatched and thrifty. We'll take a look at that in the tour at the end though. Moving down to the basement, I had to add in a bit of weirdness to this build, so I made it into an oddity shop. This is where we've got things that are a little dark, a little odd. We've got some taxidermy, occult, and magical items, etc. This will tie into the magic and cryptid areas I'm planning on making at the back of my island. I've only been to one shop like this in real life when I visited Seattle. I don't remember what it was called, but it was also in a basement and they had so many cool, dark, mysterious items, I loved it. Unfortunately, I didn't get anything because I didn't have space to bring stuff back on my plane ride home. So instead, I'm living out my oddities collection fantasies in Animal Crossing with this basement.
Speaking of weird old items, I think the most odd, unexpected item I found at an antique store, not including the oddity shop, was a vintage condom machine. I just never thought this was something people saved and would sell at an antique store, so I was quite surprised when I came across it, but now I am obsessed and want one of my own. That one was a bit pricey, so I didn't buy it, but I swear I think about going back and getting it all the time. I love the idea of hanging it in my entryway and all the surprise looks and comments we'd get when people come over. Probably not something normal people would want in their home, let alone front and center, but that's just the type of home I aspire to curate. I guess I shouldn't have been so surprised to see one for sale because there are more weirdos like me who love this shit too. For the upstairs, I was thinking of just making it into an apartment for my character, but the lack of plants in this house was unacceptable. So I ended up splitting this room into a mini apartment attached to a little garden store. Like I went into in my last Animal Crossing video, I sort of suck at taking care of plants, yet I'm still undeterred from buying more and trying again. Maybe if I actually lived or worked at a plant shop or garden in real life, I'd finally learn how to be a proficient plant caretaker? Probably not though. Anyway, this speed build has gone on long enough and I did make some adjustments off camera, so let's go ahead and jump into the tour so we can get a look at the final versions of everything. This took a long ass time, but it is finally done. We are here at the final build. So eventually when I get Animal Crossing friends and they come to visit, they'll be able to get to my house immediately after leaving the airport. Taking a left here, we're at the sort of yard sale-ish area. This definitely reminds me of an overflowing secondhand store. That bridge will lead over to where the swampy section of my island will be eventually. The background landscaping on this side could use some more work but I'll do that when I work on the orchard and meadery later on. At the front here is the freebie beach where visitors are welcome to take any of these dropped items that they want. Surprisingly, there are a few open spots for me to add more things to. I'm sure those will get filled up soon and will start spilling out onto the walkway. Yeah, I definitely need to get some people over here to start picking up these items and all the damn DIYs I have over on this side so I can make room for the farmer's market I want to put on the right side here. Or maybe I'll finally break down and sell some of this stuff so I can actually afford to build up more areas. Alright, so let's go inside. The first room we have is the main antique shop. The patterned red wallpaper with the red patterned rug and the dark woods is all a bit much, but in a good way I think. Together with all the clutter, it definitely gives me stuffy antique store vibes, but it's still quite cozy and inviting to me. Though I could definitely see some people feeling overwhelmed in a bad way with how busy it all is. I like it though. At the center is the checkout counter with a beautiful vintage cash register and that adorable pencil organizer you get from your mom in the game. On the walls, I have a few paintings from Red that I bought doubles of because I can never seem to remember what art I already have in the museum. Alright, let's go to the room on the right next. Here is the vintage kitchen section. Again, we have very loud wallpaper in here. 
It's a bit gaudy, but I think it's a perfect fit for the bright 50s, 60s kitchen thrift shop vibes I was going for here. Something I added in off camera were those neon lights above the workbench. We gotta have some rainbow representation in here somewhere. Crafting all these ironwood items was such a pain in the ass because they use so much regular wood and I find like one regular wood to every five hardwood and softwood I get so it took forever to get all the materials to craft these. So not only do I have no bells left, I also have no regular wood either. I definitely need to do some serious grinding before I'll be prepped to do another build. Alright, let's head to the next stop on this tour which is for all my fellow book nerds. Trying to make this room look like a used bookstore and not too much like an office or a library was a bit tricky, but I think I pulled it off. Having the tables and the surfaces filled with knickknacks and adding in the mismatched lamps and the layered furniture definitely helped get the point across. I would have loved to have been able to pile up junk on top of the bookshelves, but unfortunately there aren't any item slots on them. It still looks quite neat in here though. So let's move on to the last room on this first level. On the left is our secondhand clothing store. So this room looks quite a bit different from what you saw on the speed build. The other wallpaper and clothes were just too matchy and looked too much like a regular clothing boutique. So I swapped out the clothes for more vintage and mismatched pieces and changed the panel wallpaper to be this old brick instead. Those few changes made a big difference and now it looks much more like a thrift shop. I also added in some extra clutter around and some KK slider records because I don't know why, but I feel like vintage clothing and record stores are like always either right next to each other or all in the same shop. So I added in some records and stuff around too. I especially like the rainbow disco ball and that mushroom rug with a little handbag on it. Those three items together give me groovy 70s vibes and I love them. Down in the basement we have the oddity shop, which is arguably the coolest room of them all. This is the perfect spot for me to show off all the taxidermy bug heads and models I love collecting, as well as any other sort of funky items I come across. Speaking of, I forgot to put any fossils down here. I can't believe I did that. I'm definitely going to have to revisit this and add some down here. But yeah, all these rooms are sort of works in progress that I'll probably wind up adjusting here and there as I get new items and recipes. I think all these rooms look really good for using what I already have in the game though. Now let's go up to the second level for our final stop. This room you definitely didn't get much of a look at in the speed build, so here it is. Like I was saying, there just weren't enough plants in this home, so I felt the need to shrink my apartment space so I could squeeze in a little garden shop up here. So my living space is super tiny now, but it's definitely worth it to live next to all of these plants and probably wouldn't feel too cramped since it is part greenhouse. The air in this place must be so fresh. Let me try to squeeze back here into my apartment. It's a little bit tricky. This level is the most aligned with my aesthetic in real life. Lots of browns and greens, mid-century style. All the plants I try keeping alive but just end up slowly killing. I had to add a little quirkiness over here too, so I put up this crumploid gyroid. I just think it's so damn cute and sad looking. It's so crumply and wiggly. Adorable. So that's everything. This whole build was quite the undertaking, and at the end of it, I am majorly broke in terms of bells and wood, but it was worth it. I think this was a really fun idea for utilizing my character's home that incorporates places I enjoy in real life, as well as justifies my Animal Crossing hoarder tendencies. This clutter overload is probably not everyone's cup of tea, but I absolutely love it. I hope you enjoyed this build too. Let me know what area you want to see me work on for our next video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button. I have plenty more builds coming, so if you want to see more, be sure to subscribe and ring the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Remember, be kind to yourself today, and I'll see you next time.